Uh, today we have an AMA uh, session, so you know the deal. <laughs> so I'll let uh, Fabin introduce himself and then we can uh, leave the floor to you guys to ask questions and uh, yeah, you know, any kind of things that you want to share with the, our mentor or with uh, your uh, residence fellow. So yeah, enjoy the, the session. All right. Uh, thanks, Mathilde. Um, hey, everyone. Uh, happy to be here. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think, um, I think uh, uh, this is uh, my second time doing an AMA with consistency. And uh, it's, uh, it's one of the platforms I always look forward to uh, coming and, you know, talking to uh, fellow artists. Um, so just to give an intro about myself, I uh, I'm a designer, a technologist, artist, kind of a person who started as an electronics engineer, went into learning a bit of computer programming, evolved into someone who calls himself a designer, did a course on design, and then slowly moved into uh, art. Uh, I've been doing art for a long time though, uh, but uh, I haven't taken anything professionally as such in art. So I've always been thinking of, and coming from the place I am uh, in the south of India, art is not necessarily a profession as such. Uh, people look forward to becoming an engineer or a doctor here. So um, to, I, I've always had uh, the creative thing going on parallelly and I've always explored more on the engineering side of things and then moved on to design and then discovered that hey uh, I can create things which uh, people would uh, really love just for its artistic value rather than you know for its utilitarian value so uh, that's kind of my journey so far I work with uh, you know companies like uh, research labs and companies like Xerox research and Adobe uh, I'm currently working at Adobe um, I've uh, been in the NFT space uh, since early 2020, um, and I've been working. Uh, so one thing to know about me is that I don't necessarily have a style or a medium that I stick with. I do everything from traditional paintings to drawings to generative art to 3D, 2D animation and whatnot. So uh, I really uh, go with whatever uh, I feel like doing at the moment. And uh, yeah, it's been a great journey since uh, 2020. Uh, worked uh, with many uh, of the folks uh, in the area and met a lot of uh, new folks recently also. And I'm happy to take uh, any questions you have uh, to help you out and uh, otherwise. Yes, please go ahead. I could start things off. Um, Fabian, th thanks so much for doing this. Great to meet you. Um, just curious about how what, how your work at Adobe, uh, first of all, like what you're actually doing at Adobe, I think I I'm definitely interested in if you're able to speak about it, but also um, how it's influencing your current artwork and if there's anything specific ab about any specific projects that were influenced by your work there. So thank you. All right, hey, Chris. Uh... Uh, glad to meet you and uh, thanks for the question. That's a, that's a question I get quite often. So uh, my work at Adobe started as a designer, to be specific as a UX designer, but I quickly moved into the design labs team where we were kind of exploring the future of uh, creative tools and creativity and such. And we also experimented with a lot of new technology, including AR, VR, artificial intelligence, to an extent to blockchain also, uh, and uh, many of those technologies. So we were uh, trying to figure out what is the next mode of creation and what are the next mode of creative tools. So uh, part of my work involved creating new creative tools uh, and. Uh, um, in my recent work involved uh, working with the Photoshop Neural Filters scheme, uh, which is the AI-based filters for Photoshop, if you know about it. Um, so uh, combining all these together, I 
kind of have been uh, seeing what is the latest or maybe the future way of creating uh, things and you know creating art with that uh, so for example uh, one of my um, works at adobe was on reimagining the future of digital brushes now how can brushes uh, which we use in photoshop be used in the future and one of the concepts we came up with was uh, animated brushes you draw something and it's already animated uh, what if you could connect those animations with external data like you know rainfall or uh, time of the day etc uh, and make it dynamic so your illustration is animated and it really reflects the environment where the illustration is placed in so if it is raining around the artwork it will rain inside the artwork that kind of thing so uh, creating these creative tools will also give an idea of what kind of new creations are possible with these tools and uh, many of or most of my artworks uh, in the field has been in nft especially has been related to uh, using some of these future tools and future tools which i've been creating and using that tools to create art with it and uh, share it with the world so uh, yeah uh, so that's that's largely how my work has influenced uh, my uh, my uh, art and uh, there is a lot of connect between uh, the uh, ai tool sets and ar vr that i've been using that i've been exploring uh, which has also uh, you know over the course of time my career has influenced some, my, my as and my career at adobe and the previous labs have in, influenced the kind of way i create things so uh, what i mean is most of the time i look at an innovative approach to creation so there is some kind of a new creation method or a creation idea that comes in my art so yeah that's that's kind of how these things have influenced me i hope i have answered your question yeah yeah no that's that's super helpful i i think one of the things that drew me to your artwork is uh that sort of exploration around new technological processes so and it sounds like your work has like really sort of in a nice way overlapped with that and kind of provided new avenues um is there i don't know how to phrase this exactly but um are there areas of tech that you've explored that you are uh really like want to lean more into is there areas that have become dead ends for you um <laughs> so uh, i don't consider myself uh, a much of a specialist in a particular tech domain so i like to work with stories and i like to work with technology so i i think i've done a lot of work in ar and vr so i think much of my experience has been in that although i've done a bit of uh you know creating custom models for turn machine learning algorithms and creating ai based creations using some of the tools out there uh, i and also you know custom contracts and everything in blockchain and everything so uh again i i value the story more and what kind of story i'm putting out there uh, or what kind of uh, you know experience i'm putting out there so i would say i would align i would lean a little bit more towards ar and vr but again not going into the whole way just to call myself a specialist interesting yeah and i think like some and that's sort of like an area that i or like just a sort of modality that i've always found myself leaning towards it's just like being inspired by the capabilities and promise of technology but one thing i've always come sort of up against is the concept of like I'm just when I produce work it's like almost for the point of uh playing around with or you know exploring the capabilities of a lot of these tools um I've seen like through your work you you've you've got a really deft touch at uh I think and you've already spoken about this a little bit about storytelling and story crafting around the work that you create um Can you speak like a little bit more about um storytelling around your work as well as weaving a larger narrative in between separate pieces uh for your like larger uh quantity of work? Um yeah, uh 
so uh, i wouldn't say there is a larger narrative to things uh, which is pre planned but uh, somehow since it evolves with the person um, uh, there comes some kind of a narrative to it but to be specific to each of the artworks what i uh, really uh, when i started off i was I, I, so i i have a way of uh, indulging myself with a lot of uh philosophy and uh, you know bordering around spirituality and thinking about what is the beyond and those kind of things so uh i try to mix a lot of that with uh, my art books and i uh, i'm a, i'm a big fan of many of the uh poetries of uh, uh, some of those uh, people like rumi and there are many other uh, people who have influenced me and you can see a lot of that in my work storytelling perhaps is uh, what happens when i create is i initially think of an idea maybe an invention or an innovation and then once that comes in i think of you know hey where does this fit in the story sometimes the story comes first and the invention comes later but what happens is i think about a kind of you know what am i feeling at the moment what is the kind of uh, thought process i have what am i investigating currently for example if it is in philosophy or you know i'm i'm thinking about uh, the whole concept of the society being a single uh, modality i mean in the sense that you know everybody is one as a concept right you know there is this concept that everybody um eventually is uh, a single entity and beyond all the differences we perceive uh, between each other there is this one consciousness or i don't want to go into the details of it but you know deriving stories from that uh, in a subjective way in a way i would personally feel uh, is connecting to myself and connecting to the people around me the situations around me i try to weave a story and more or less i always try to indulge a bit of feeling into emotion into it and uh, poetry into it especially uh, to see if you know there is something i could express uh, which would make the audience feel something rather than you think something and that's something which i've been focusing a lot the recently uh, i'm focusing more on the feeling part of it you know it doesn't have to be expressed in terms of words could be expressed in terms of feelings what do you feel when you look at the work when you experience the work so uh, that brings out the story and there is also a lot of improvisation which happens uh, uh, for example one of my recent work was released as a normal auction uh, in open sea but uh, somehow that did not do justice to the story of the work and i found i thought of an idea that you know i should probably sell this not for money as a currency but for stories as a currency and suddenly i asked uh, the community if you can share stories about a particular topic and then um, you know if 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 you uh, if you if uh, if you if there is a particular story which really strikes with me and i'll give that nft for free to the uh, to the storyteller so that really uh, completed the whole circle of the story and uh, as i said it was improvised and suddenly happened it was a it was not pre planned and it happened so i think there is a lot of elements which come together um, more or less i would say i'm a person who go with the flow and invent as i go so um, yeah i i think i just i don't track there but i uh, hope that answers your question just yeah that's great i appreciate it um no that's that's actually really interesting to kind of see beneath the hood so to speak Um yeah thank you I don't want to hog the entire time so I'll, I'll yield the floor but thank you so much. All right thank you. Right um so uh if if you have other questions please feel free to ask if not I can share one of my early works uh, in the NFT space and you know you can take a look at it. Uh, in the meantime uh mathil do we have a particular chat for this 
Okay. Uh, I yeah, see we an have, have yeah, we have uh, the residency third cohort chat. Oh, okay. Where, where I shared your uh, website link and also your Twitter handle. Um, I think right. it would be great in the meantime, maybe describe a little bit your uh, like your path in the artistic career, because uh, we also have a resident here, Anna, that has a background in um, as an engineer, too. So not a background, actually. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so it would be great to to know a little bit more what, you know, what brought you uh, here to today to be uh, an artist, you know, from a, a more uh, like say like technical uh, environment i don't know more uh, yeah 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 um again uh, it's it's uh, a bit late in the night so i might uh, go off track please forgive me for that but uh, to answer your question in terms of how i moved from engineering so as i said uh, coming from um, the geographical i mean coming from you know, the south of india we really uh have this thing in india that you know the whole career at least when during the time when i was in college everybody thought of the main career tracks to be just engineering or uh, you know being a medical i mean being a doctor so uh, i also thought uh, you know engineering was the thing and that's how i ended up as an engineer uh, as an electronics engineer to be specific but uh, somehow uh, i found this particular area in uh, electronics engineering, which really stood out to me. I invested most of my time in it. And it was nothing other than uh, digital image processing. And this was, uh, you know, using code uh, to process images. And this was using MATLAB and, you know, some of those old uh, simulation tools to, uh, I mean, MATLAB is still there now, but uh, what I'm saying is uh, it, it, it was, you know, it was a very, uh, process oriented thing and you know trying to figure out how different images match up what is the kind of correlation between them but in that i found a lot more uh, fun and a lot more things to play with and a lot more things to experiment with uh, than the other topics perhaps from there i uh, went into learning programming as such which really excited me because i could combine this whole concept of uh, you know creating and creating something visual uh, that was the start uh, i also started long back with a little bit of flash uh, programming so that also was exciting to uh, begin with so although uh, i i didn't pick it up later after that i was more on to 3d uh, art but after my college i um, was uh, again I worked with a research lab where I was working with interaction design. And in interaction design, there was all these amazing uh, hardware tools that hardware creations that we were creating, you know, gesture-based creations, fiducials, uh, motion sensing, uh, all these things were done. And all these uh, really excited me. And somehow uh, the missing part was uh, that, you know, I could create something not just for the utilitarian value, but for its artistic value, you know, for its uh, expression. So that was missing for the longest time. And I think I discovered that perhaps uh, when I found the world of design and started learning about artists uh, and art history. And that is when I discovered, uh, st started slowly moving into, you know, being someone who creates uh, just for the, just for the creation itself. And uh, I did my first exhibition perhaps in around 2015, I guess. And uh, that was largely a photography exhibition. And uh, after that, uh, I did my first international exhibition on 2016, uh, which was an AI art. Uh, and that was uh, in Florence, Bien uh, Biennale in Italy. And post that, the NFT space came up and you know, I was working with Adobe. I took, took a break from Adobe and then this whole NFT space was the perfect match for the kind of creations I was making. And then um, I had a lot of opportunities here uh, to begin with, a lot of uh, venues to exhibit, with a lot of people who were interested in the conversations. People were <coughs> willing to, uh, people, people are, uh, very open to uh, ideas and you know 
talking about ideas and uh, evolving those things so uh, i think uh, that just has kept me going uh, even now uh, i think uh, from being an engineer to uh, being an artist i do not see them as separate i always carried all of the elements together and i think that perhaps gives me a different kind of niche to work with um so uh, yeah i think uh, it's it's a culmination of all the works uh, so far um i've add, i've shared a link uh, by the way in the residency uh, channel and that is a link for a work of mine called pilgrimage and pilgrimage was this uh, augmented reality project in early 2020 and uh, this project involved creating nine sculptures which was located at nine locations around the world and people had to travel there to collect these work i cannot see um, i don't sorry, i am sorry. Uh, i just shared it in the residency third cohort channel uh do you guys can see it because this can is having okay oh, okay uh, my discord is down it happens uh, lately okay, okay let me share <laughs> that again oh, okay yeah okay now i see it thank you sorry all right no problem so yeah uh, this was uh, an uh, augmented reality project it, essentially it, it involved keeping these 3d models at nine locations around the world kind of like pokemon go but in the sense that these are unique nft collectibles which you can travel and collect uh, and this was a worldwide experience uh, with prime with all these nine models were located at these prime locations around the world if you read about it if you go to the videos you'll see how uh, some of the places like you know price of the dream statue um, you know um, museum of modern art the louvre all these places were there and you the person who reaches there for the first time uh poses it uh, poses the augmented reality model and shares the video will get the nft for free the first time i actually shared this i really didn't, didn't expect anyone to collect it uh, especially uh being the um you know being the lockdown time uh with covid and everything but within one week people were traveling all around uh, people were connecting with friends or friends you know family and everyone all around the world uh, collecting this within one week all nine models were uh, collected one or two weeks uh, all nine models were collected so this was uh, again an experience uh, using uh, the work which i created earlier on so that's an example of uh, one of my works and if you if you have any questions regarding you know um, especially how early generative art or early ar vr works evolved how things changed or now even what is the situation or how we can connect technologies like this with nfts it's something we could you know even brainstorm about uh, so you can ask questions on that or uh, in the meantime i can share another project of mine um <clears throat> hi how are you doing uh very nice to have you here and be able to ask question uh so yeah my name is anna and like matilde said uh, i also have a background in engineering and then some roundabout way ended up um making art um so i recognize that in your story and um, what i'm curious about and maybe it was already a little bit hidden in chris's question as well but i see that your work is very experimental in the sense that you experiment with a lot of different tools and like you said you also easily just switch between uh mediums and um i wonder then how do you do uh, i have i have a tendency that i want to do that but i'm kind of scared to do that because i feel like i've now kind of put a certain aesthetic and a certain medium out there that i've made kind of uh, a name for myself that you know how, how how do you kind of keep one story through your work while also experimenting with a lot of different i don't know if that makes sense okay. question, but... yeah <laughs> yeah uh, i hope you can uh, do something question, with it. Anna. 
<laughs> no, no, I really understand the question. And I, I've been asked this question also uh, previously uh, in terms of, you know, style per se. Uh, but glad to know you're also an engineer who is uh, now into arts, uh, into the field of design. But just before to answer, before answering your question, can I ask you what kind of work uh, do you create in art? Is it you know traditional illustration? I mean, traditional art, painting. Is there digital illustration or you know generative art? What kind of work do you create? Um, so yeah, I make generative art, and I usually actually exclusively work either in processing or P5JS, and even making a small step over to shaders feels very out of character for me. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. All right. Uh, yeah. So um, um, here's the thing. So I uh, probably uh, I've already established from the beginning uh, this with my collectors and with my audience or uh, with whoever I've been conversing with the switching of styles and switching of mediums. And it has been a little jagged for the uh, collectors per se, because most of my work does in, you know, follow a cohesive pattern. And uh, I can see that reflected in the kind of sales I have. Uh, there are sometimes a very big spike in the sales, and then there is a long, uh, you know, long uh, time when I don't have any sales. So, uh, I see much uh, more um, consistent sales uh, for people who follow a style. And uh, I do respect people who follow a style because they can evolve within the style uh, into different um, meanings. So if, for example, if you have a particular visual aesthetic, you could uh, work with P5JS and create uh, something with that, but eventually you could borrow the aesthetic towards working with shaders or even 3D for that matter, and you could create with that so that your signature still remains, but uh, there is the exploration of different tools. I know artists who've been working as illustrators uh, who've uh, created AR works, borrowing characters from their illustrations. So uh, what I'm saying, what I'm trying to say is you can keep the signature alive in your work and uh, without doing a lot of uh, moving here and there, you're slowly evolving. I'm sure uh, the consistency will be maintained, at least in terms of style. So uh, the only problem is that you couldn't probably get experimental a lot, uh, like kind of the work I am doing. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm okay with having no sales for a long time also, uh, although sometimes I get, uh, you know, frustrated. And I, I just see that, but I'm, I've, I've been through the phase of, you know, having no sales for a long time, and I understand that, but the most important factor is that I stick to what my heart feels I'm doing at that time, and uh, I've always invested in that first. So, um, I, and that is kind of uh, what is reflective of the kind of work I do also. Uh, you know, sometimes I work uh, around uh, different technologies, swapping from one to other. But uh, the underlying story or the underlying emotion or the underlying thought is always uh, consistent in the sense that you know, there is this philosophy I've been evolving for some time and uh, it's always debatable, but it's, it's something which I've been working on. So that remains the same, it, although it is not visible uh, completely outside. So uh, yeah, to summarize, I would say if you're sticking to one style and uh, and it's it's the better, it's the safer way to do. I would say uh, you can always experiment otherwise, but uh, you should probably have a signature common to all your creations, uh, and it could be a visual signature. It could be a signature on the kind of uh, thought or story that you're saying. So yeah, that is what I would uh, probably advise you. Um, yeah, I uh, hope that answers your question. Uh, yeah, for sure. Thank you for that. And I think I, I do do the experimentation uh, because it's I'm kind of following what I'm 
drawn towards my curiosity and uh, it's just work that I don't put out there yet uh, and maybe like you said that can also be done in a way gradually and still making sure that it is in line with the other aesthetics um, yeah yeah and uh, I also know uh, I mean there are there are other ways also in which you can you know have a single style going on and you can have a parallel uh, way in which you can keep exploring and experimenting so you can create uh, your style uh, as the main thing and the other one where you experiment would be in an alternate account anonymous or otherwise or you know you could uh, probably also specifically mention that these are my experiments these are things i'm exploring i don't know if you're interested in those kind of things so uh, yeah it's it's just about how you uh, largely look at it from a audience perspective from a collective perspective etc like you know how would they feel uh, if the kind of work you're coming up with uh, suddenly changes and if you have uh, you know explorations and uh, there is this consistent track um yeah so uh, i i think that is uh, one way to go about it Are there any other question? I'd love to hear more about uh, some more of your art projects, if possible. All right. Um, so um, I'll share two of my projects. Uh, so this one is a recent project, and uh, and this is the one which I was talking about previously also. Um, so this project is called Leave Me Be, and it uh, comes from listening to a lot of stories about trauma uh, and, uh, you know, pain and healing, etc. So uh, Leave Me Be is, uh, a, is a generative artwork uh, in the sense that the art was created exclusively using code, and uh, it is also using a bit of machine learning to detect faces. Uh, so it swaps between two imagery based on the presence of a face, presence or absence of a face, basically. So uh, uh, if you if you open the artwork, uh, what you what it will show is uh, essentially um, a humanoid figure with with a golden line, um, jagged line. Uh, kind of representing the Kintsugi uh, concept of, uh, of how uh, you know you uh, in in Japanese uh, there is in Japan there is this concept where uh, the the when a pot or when a bowl cracks falls down and cracks it can be it is it, they they uh, keep the pieces together by you know using gold they gild the tracks uh, and you know combine the uh, bind the pieces together so uh, essentially the concept is that you know the the mistakes or the the wounds or the things that uh, give flavor to give the beauty to the uh, whole uh, to the whole person or the whole substance so uh, this essentially in this art it shows uh, how um, and again, my, my thoughts are a bit totally out because it's it's late in the night and that's why I'm, I'm struggling to get my words. But um, uh, the artwork essentially represents the gold-gilded uh, uh, healed wounds of a person. And this wound has been healed over a long course of time using, you know, different processes like meditation and uh, you know therapy and all these things so essentially this person which you see in front of has gone through the whole process and healed himself a person but then suddenly this face comes in front of this person and when the face is detected or face is seen by this person the wound uh, exposes itself and starts to bleed uh, whatever has been done so far in the process of healing has been undone so this was uh, essentially the concept, and I made this art based out of the story. Um, and 
again this was the artwork which i put out there to sell it for currency uh, but then later i thought it doesn't do justice to the story of uh, the artwork and that is when i asked folks to you know say your story of healing and then whichever one uh, that strikes me uh, truly we would be giving them the nft of the artwork for free uh and i started listening to the stories and people were brave enough to say some of their you know personal stories of healing and <clears throat> many of them said how you know nfts were a place where they could you know um bring out their true expressions and they could find uh, solace in art they could find um, community support here there were folks who were talking about their uh, old uh, you know the problems how they how how the problems were created and how it healed along the way so a lot of stories came up a lot of which i could resonate with and one of them which i found really striking with and i actually gifted them this piece so that uh, that project is uh, yeah that is leave me be um if you have any questions regarding that i'm uh, definitely open to uh, answer that the tech part itself I, i used processing for it in 5js specifically and for the face detection i used ml 5js uh, there is a build of uh, there's a port of ml5 in uh, p5 itself uh, and i used that specifically so yeah and if uh, there are no other questions i can move on to one more project of mine uh, and this is uh, a project which i did uh, which i did around uh, my hometown uh, it's about my hometown and it's one of the projects closest to my heart uh, this was essentially a reflection of what i felt uh, about uh, my hometown and this project called alapura was created exclusively using code only uh, a lot of algorithms went into creating the animations of it this particular artwork is dynamic in the sense that it changes based on the location where you are in where you are in uh, in the city of alapura so if you are using your device in one location a different art different version of the artwork will show up it also changes based on the time of the day seasons um, you know and uh, etc uh, it uh, also is made accessible such that people with visual disability can uh, you know uh, experience the project through uh, voice through using sound uh, through using this screen reader uh and there are five different locations to it each of which has unique variations every time it loads different set of all the elements in the artwork changes every time you load it and you get a new expression every time it is loaded so uh, yeah this this was a pretty extensive project and all the animations all the image elements were created uh using code uh p5js only so it took a lot of time to uh, make it responsive and deterministic um so yeah that's uh, one of the artworks uh, which i created probably by the end of last year yeah it was during the uh, by the end of last year so yeah you can take a look of look at it i've shared the link for that also So cool, thank you, Fabian. And maybe if uh, we usually ask to our mentors what are their prediction on the crypto art trend, maybe it would be very, um, you know, great to know um, if you think there is a, a trend right now regarding technologies more than movement or styles. I don't know if my question was clear. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so I. I... I kind of predicted uh, made a prediction in 2020 which didn't come out true so I don't know if my predictions really work uh, that much but uh, I can I can uh, tell you that uh, in terms of technology and everything I see a lot of uh, metaverse or the concept of metaverse coming into play a lot more 
and uh, the creations becoming more intelligent creations becoming more dynamic and responsive so for example we create artworks which are you know static uh, expressing you know you have a, an image or a video which is a great work of its own by its own but what if this can change with where it is placed where in the whole metaverse it is what if it changes with the user interaction or i'm not saying make a tool but uh, something which is meaningfully changing with its environment so that is something which is going to come up a lot uh, because especially in a virtual world you don't want uh, you know static image uh, just to be there but you will see a lot more dynamic creations coming up a lot more code going behind it uh, and a lot of tools to create these things coming up so that's something which i see happening uh, i also see um, augmented reality coming uh, playing a lot uh, in terms of layering a digital world over our physical uh, physical locations so uh, there is a lot of chance that you or uh, many of the artists would be creating site specific location based artworks which would match with the physical uh, physical infrastructure which is present there for example you might be creating something for a building something for the wall of a building or something for the whole of the building something uh, around a garden or something around a park uh, something over a lake those kind of things could happen uh, and in terms of nft space as such collectibles are huge right now a lot of collectibles are happening uh, i see and it's not just me and i hate to say it but people are talking a lot about utility uh, in art and i i really uh, don't think art should uh, have a utility per se other than its own intrinsic value but uh, people are talking about how it could go beyond just uh, you know a road map of a collectible kind of a thing so that's something to keep an eye out i wouldn't say go invest in it or go create for it right now but keep an eye out for it uh, one last trend i would like to say about is uh, the intelligent intelligence part of it uh, where things become intelligent and assistive or maybe you know uh, even communicative at par with human intelligence or maybe a little lesser let's call, let's keep it a little less of one now uh, so you'll see a lot more bots coming up lot more uh, intelligent uh, artworks coming up which respond uh, to conversations which can converse which can uh, you know do things uh, intelligently you know figure out things uh, there is also the possibility of uh new algorithms like you know what you see with clip uh, or we can those kind of things where you create a vr you can generate images and then the question really comes what is the role of the artist uh and i would always say artists are very important it's just that artists have to evolve a little more than what is uh, the status quo so i think these are the trends that i see uh, coming up uh, towards the future um yeah definitely i hope that all of you uh, took notes about <laughs> the fabin's prediction and maybe we can check about this uh, in a, in a year maybe uh, so i'm sure a lot of us won't come true <laughs> <laughs> or maybe in a month because you know this space is so so uh, you know rapid so maybe this could all happen in a month so um i think we have uh, the perfect you know time for one last question and it would be great to um that you guys you know, of course ask fabin um one last question before we can um say goodbye to our mentor even because i think this is very late where you are based fabin am i right <laughs> Yeah, uh, so I'm a I'm an early sleeper, and it's almost eleven thirty p.m. here. Uh, I know it's not that too late, but uh, yeah, just say. <laughs> but and I don't I'm definitely love to take another question. I mean, I I loved your predictions. Um, you mentioned something about uh, artists needing to 
uh, maybe uh, diversify or differentiate uh, like as more machine learning and AI processes become more accessible. Um, what are some of the ways that you see uh, or you think artists could differentiate uh, to encourage sort of that uh, ownership and conversation? Again, uh, thanks for the question, Chris. Uh, I think uh, the answer to that would be to keep an eye out for the new evolving tools. Uh, I know for, uh, for that matter, Adobe and a lot of other companies who create creative tools, like, you know, for example, Runway ML, they've been, we, they've been creating a lot of tools uh, which help people who are not, you know, technically, uh, technically uh, evolved, uh, technically capable enough to create this by themselves using code or anything like that, but have the artistic skills or expressiveness that they could, um, you know, make these tools uh, go to its maximum. So uh, what I'm trying to say is that uh, keep an eye out for these tools. A lot of these are coming up uh, and make sure you uh, try to use all these uh, and experiment with this parallelly to your own creations. Um, always uh, be open. Uh, it's it's very easy to say that, you know, that is not something I want to do. That is something for the others to do. Or it is always easy to say that, you know, hey, uh, uh, just uh, that's just, you know, a fancy way of doing things. Uh, but things are evolving very fast and it's always good for us to get to know things. I wouldn't say you have to invest time fully into these things, but get to know all these things. There might be something in all these technologies which you, which will really resonate with you. Uh, and uh, we don't, of course, I am I'm a person who always watches for traditional art to be included in uh, in NFTs or any of the new technologies or that come up with. I I'm, I always feel inclusiveness is not just for other uh, domains of the society, but it's also for the chronological order of art. Everything from the past should also be included and taken forward, not just said, you know, those are the old things. We are cool and we are new, those kind of things. But uh, always be open to new ways of expression. Uh, you can always stick to your signature style. You can always be close to your uh, way of a way, a way of expressing and the stories that you say. But uh, always try to see if you can say that story uh, using a different tool or a different method. Uh, in terms of uh, specific technology, I can tell you that uh, in using AI tools, uh, you can use neural filters in Photoshop to um, you know, use uh, different uh, AI-based technologies in some of your artworks. Runway ML has a lot of these things uh, with which you can create uh, amazing AI-based creations. There are other tools also out there, like you know, Art Breeder is another platform, Playform is another platform. A lot of uh, tools, uh, platforms like that have come up. Um, AR and VR, uh, a lot of, uh, I can't recall anything specifically, but I know r 2 is one uh, really good way to get started with uh, AR and VR very easily. Um, if you want to get your hands wet with a little bit of code and everything, I would uh, say you try out um, Unity, uh, uh, eight, eight wall, uh, 8 Wall, if I'm right, uh, et cetera. Uh, blockchain, of course, uh, you can create your own custom contracts, or you could use something like Manifold. I've been using Manifold recently for uh, my recent works. Uh, Manifold helps you create your own contract. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think uh, these are some of the technologies, although I am investigating some of uh, technologies beyond this, like, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, neural, uh, neural not the neural networks from AI, but neural networks as in brain neural networks. So I've been investigating time, investing time in those also. So uh, things are moving again very fast. There is a chance that uh, you can evolve along with it. Not all of it, but keep an eye out for some of it. So yeah, uh, I think uh, I've uh, explained a lot. Uh, again, my uh, 
conversations are a little incoherent because of uh, the time but uh, i'm really glad i've been i will i could come here again and share some of these things and thank you all for asking these amazing questions and uh, i hope you have an amazing uh, residency forward and you get the best out of it uh, from all the mentors um yeah